So on behalf of uh, PCA and ICA SDG organizing team, I invite Mr. J. Raja, Manager, Design, Flight Control System, Aircraft Research and Design Center, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Government of uh, India to deliver a session on digital fly by wire controller in flighter aircraft. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, 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 is my presentation is it visible? Yes, sir, visible, sir. So, uh, as I introduce myself, I'm Raja. So today we'll uh, discuss about the uh, recent controllers, which is used in the fighter or trainer, whatever it is. Mainly for the uh, fiber wire system. So. Uh, when we go for before going for the introduction of the flyby system uh, have i'll show some images uh, to all of you guys uh, have you uh, in your uh, engineering studies have you really thought uh, these uh, uh, images or these uh, concepts will be used in our uh, any industries many of you would have got the doubt so like if you probably would have come across open loop control system closed loop control system and uh, this is the most typical one where uh, every controller engineer would have uh, come across where you have a proportional derivative integrative controller why are we really uh, studying about this differentiation and why are we really studying about this uh, integral and why these kind of uh, transfer function or laplace transformation root locus bode plot so uh, many of you would have come across these words definitely if you guys are uh, uh, at least of about uh, second year or uh, second year mid definitely you would have come across of these words so many would have thought uh, why we are really reading all those things which we will never use in our lifetime is it really uh, true those uh, these figures are uh, not at all involved in any control uh, platforms it is not we'll just go for a small video clip uh, how the uh, really the controller how efficiently a controller can work and why do we need really a best controller uh, to do this so uh, so this is one of the uh, video clip which is taken uh, in lca this uh, which has gone for a trial called uh, landing on the ship so this whatever you are seeing this is ship and this is sea this we call it as carrier. Uh, Vikrant is the indigenous carrier which was uh, designed and developed in India. So the aircraft should land on the uh, ship. So this is our intention. So how a best controller can do because the landing uh, from the, uh, if you compare with the normal landing to the carrier landing it is totally different. Normal landing, if you consider it, it have around uh, three kilometers of runway. Normal passenger aircraft only would have seen after touchdown, probably some minutes it will be keep on rolling either for landing as well as for takeoff but uh, that kind of uh, luxury uh, runway you don't get it in the ship because ship ship is designed for multiple purpose so you will have a runway of uh, just 190 meters uh, so 190 meters and comparing with the three kilometers very short so you have to land your aircraft within 190 meter and as well as you have to take off your aircraft within 190 meter so these are all the challenging part when you are approaching and you have to hold your uh, uh, parameters like the AOA uh, and your flight path angle. So many critical parameter precisely your controller should maintain. So when he comes from here to touch here and land, by the time you are, uh, this phase is very crucial. Uh, is my video, is it visible to everybody? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, is it video, is it visible to everybody? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so the phase when the transition happens to this phase, that means to approach phase to the touchdown phase is very critical. So that is the way where you are, uh, why we are uh, designing a, such a complex controller. So I will just see this video. So this is called the arrestor hook. So as soon as touchdown the aircraft, uh, your uh, hook will engage with the wire and it stops within a uh, few meters. Within a very few meters, it will stop.
so this is the approach phase when the aircraft comes near to the deck this is the ship deck we call it as uh, deck so this is a ship deck and the aircraft comes towards it so this phase is very very critical so when without controller if pilot uh, should all the uh, do the activity of controlling it is very very tough tough job for the pilot so now the uh, whatever the uh, the approach phase is the pilot inputs is very very less so everything will be taken care by the controller So this is the 190 meter what I was talking from the touchdown to your uh, aircraft stopping. So the main critical portion where you will be having with the controller. Uh, let us assume he is not uh, the aircraft is not hooked up, or it is not latched, or it is not uh, arrested with the wire. So what will happen? This aircraft uh, you have to take off within the shorter duration. You just see the this is the distance for, for your takeoff. So your controller should be capable enough to give the control signal to the actuators. so that uh, you don't miss anything suppose if there is any mistake within this portion so you don't get uh, much place or much longer runway to take off within this you have to take off again so this is the take off phase so when from the uh, this we call it as the ramp exit so so uh, uh, just now we have completed the video so that is where you are uh, most complex controller uh, which will help you for uh, uh, for uh, for designing any such system to behave whatever the desire uh, uh, things you want to test with you so we'll go with the beginning of uh, what is mean by open loop and closed loop uh, control system i think these things everybody would have uh, studied in your uh, curriculum so uh, this is the open loop so uh, before going to the complex controller let us understanding why we are going for the closed loop controller so open loop controller is uh, it's, it's like it's not a smart controller or it is like uh, you have to be so smart when you are using open loop control system so for example if you have uh, uh a yeah, light uh, either uh, in your room probably will have the light you just switch on the light and you forget either it may be day time or uh, it may be a night time your light will be keep on on so it doesn't sense about the day or night it just work with the switches that's all similar way this is the uh, heater coil i think most of your uh, if you guys are in engineering and uh, and if you are saying outside uh, the hostel definitely you would have used this one so if you are smart enough uh, probably you can use this uh, heater coil very efficiently suppose you are uh, dipping this coil inside the bucket and you forget maybe for half an hour or one hour so what will happen you are uh, your temperature will keep on increasing it doesn't work with the principle of uh, what is required for the human being it continuously it just heats up your uh, water content so after some point of time what will happen your water will get evaporated even your uh, bucket melts it doesn't matter for it so the once you switch on it will be continuously heating up so which is not required for the human being so so nowadays uh, uh, all the systems are going with the automated one so this is the now recently everybody might be using this kind of geyser type so this geyser is the one which is which is working with a closed loop control system closed loop control system in the sense uh, you need the feedback so there is a one element called uh, temperature feedback so this how as it works because it sends the temperature there is a controller uh, which is sitting in the heater and you there is a predefined uh, temperature you can increase the temperature let us say you need the temperature of 30 degrees celsius you can set the temperature 
and uh, once the temperature it reaches 30 degrees celsius either you switch off or uh, you forget but there is a circuit which will break the uh, current flow which goes to the coil and it stops exactly at your desired temperature 30. So uh, I'll just repeat it once again because uh, the whatever the logic which we are using in this heater, the exactly similar kind of logics we are using in our aircraft also. Only thing is that it may be slightly complex, but the basic is same. Uh, so this is the uh, control of the aircraft. Uh, uh, once again. So I'll just show you. Uh, is it uh, visible? So for everybody. I think this probably many of you would have uh, made similar kind of uh, your aircraft. So before going to the aircraft, how does it work? So let us assume this is the aircraft. So when you, if you need the aircraft pitch up like this, so what you should do, this is the control surfaces. You can try, you can try, anybody can try, so it will work. So if your control surfaces are down like this, uh, is it visible to everybody? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vishay. So, uh, so I can show you, but uh, usually this I will make for the offline session so people can see. So when you keep the control surfaces are down, so when you move the aircraft, it has the tendency of pitch up. So it will go the pitch up. So if you keep your control surfaces up like this, and see, this is called uh, so whenever you move the stick, there is a control stick, you move the stick back, so your uh, surface will come up. So when the surfaces come up, so this will have the tendency of uh, pitch up, like this it goes. Right. So if you want to pitch down, that means the aircraft should go down. So you keep your surface down and try at home. So then you move this, uh, uh, your... Uh, Pepper aircraft. So then what will happen? It has the tendency of going down. And if you want to roll the aircraft, what you should do? One surface should be up and another surface should be down. So then the aircraft will have a tendency of rolling. That's all. So I think this you can uh, even you can try. So this is the exactly same principle which we are uh, uh, using in our uh, Aircraft. This is called the six degree of freedom. So six degree of freedom in the sense, so you have a pitch up, pitch down, roll, left, roll, right, and yaw. So this, uh, this six degree of, this is the six degree of freedom, which we have to control the uh, aircraft. And this is the uh, uh, same thing, whatever I explained. So the, this is called roll, uh, roll up and down. And this is called yaw. Pitch up is, Pitch up and pitch down. You have to control only these moments. So initial days when uh, 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 earlier, maybe uh, during um, before 80s, I think. So there was no uh, wires. There was no electronics at all. So you have to move your uh, uh, control surfaces manually. So you move this rod, and your uh, uh, your rod will move your surface up and down, so that you will get the pitch up and pitch down and for roll left and roll down. So for both, it works accordingly. So similar way, one second. But there was a lot of disadvantage when you are using this kind of mechanical control system. So what will happen? So the wires, if you are using uh, instead of uh, flyby wire system, when you are using the mechanical push pull rod, so this kind of damages will happen over the period. What will happen? So you are uh, let us assume you have this area. If there is any slag in this area and you are trying to pull, but still the surfaces will not go because there is a slag in this. So. Uh, if this is the aircraft and you are getting the thrust from this engine and you are moving the stick so this is the rod which goes to the control surface so when you move the stick whatever i was showing 
exactly same thing uh when you are this is the whatever the surfaces we are calling it here uh, this is the surface in the aircraft so you move the from the rod you move the surface up and down so that your aircraft will have the pitch up and pitch down so what is the limitation limitation here is uh, uh, this is like a cycle uh, you are right now whatever the aircraft we have a fly by wire system or like your bike what is the difference between the cycle and bike is that but cycle you have to ride with your uh, muscle power so and you have a limitation you can't reach your full speed or if you are going to the uphill mountain it is very difficult for you to ride your cycle because similar way the aerodynamic load it will be acting on the surface when he is flying so it is very difficult for the pilot to operate the control surfaces so similar so what they did they did, uh, they did a small uh, changes in this uh, so they have made uh, assistance for the pilot so nowadays if you are seeing in the bus uh, the doors opening and closing uh, not the nobody is doing manually so there is a actuator sitting here that actuator will move the uh, door open and close so similar way what did they do so the sir here the rod will come up to this end here only you have the problem of handling the aerodynamic load instead of pilot moves there is actuator that will move the surface up and down but still this is uh, this was it was pretty good in the earlier days because pilot he was not getting the full load as like the previously there was a manually you open the bus door and close after that when it was uh, uh, done with the actuator it was pretty much easier for uh, the pilot also because he is not moving the control surface some actuator is moving but the precise the word which is missing here is the precise exactly whatever the place you want to control that is missing so then they went for the uh, uh, a feedback control system so feedback control system in a sense you have in between you have a controller previously none of the aircrafts were having this controller pilot will give the input and that input will go to the straight away to the surface nothing was there in between the controller now when we go for the closed loop controller you will have a controller and sensor this two elements again i repeat i'll just compare every time with the your uh, our geyser input so when you go for the geyser uh, and you have a controller the sensor is a temperature sensor in when you come for the fly by wire system so why we are calling it as a fly by wire uh, because nowadays we are not flying the aircraft with the mechanical linkage we are flying with the wire so uh, i'll show the uh, aircraft diagrams how the fly by wire uh, will be implemented in the aircraft so fly by wire system in the sense you give the input and the input goes to the computer and the computer will command to the actuator so in between there is no mechanical linkage at all and one more advantage the fly by wire system even the pilot if he is not giving any input the controller directly it can give the input to the control surface this is another advantage so in order to get your desired outcome the pilot if he intended to do this thing or this activity uh, somebody else is doing for him so he is not doing somebody else is doing for him which is nothing but your fly by wire control so you are flying the aircraft only by the wire and the usage of computer right so this probably this will give you some fair idea so this is the stick if he is moving so you want the pitch up moment correct so you move the stick back and the surfaces goes up so you want the pitch up now so aircraft should go up like this so who will do now the input will go to the computer and the computer only will decide what control signal should go to the actuator you don't need to worry about the uh, uh, diagram or complexity in the diagram you just understand that's why i have made a very uh, simple diagram so uh, this is the computer where it decides uh, what kind of uh, control signal should go to the actuator so now pilot job is very simple because he need to just move the control sticks there is no mechanically linked so it is like a bike you just uh, uh, increase the acceleration there is no tightness or whatever the load we are getting in the uh, cycle you will never get in the lo uh, load in the bike you just uh, what you have to turn similarly you have to move the stick so that correspondingly you have some sensors that sensors will give i need uh, uh, this much movement in the control surfaces so that i can go up so that will be decided by the computer so this flight control computer how exactly it works because this 
the closed loop uh, when you are designing a closed loop control system what again i'll just repeat you need a feedback so you have a computer for computer or uh, this controller will work only with your input and your feedback because it doesn't know the uh, present speed of the aircraft or present uh, configuration of the aircraft so what will happen so every instant what controller will get it gets the inputs or it gets the uh, rates that means what we will call it is the aircraft pitch rate that means how rate he is going up so that means he is moving the stick at how rate the aircraft is going up so based on that rate it gives the command to the actuator and this controller will have its own dynamics the dynamics in the sense how aircraft will behavior also will be implemented in the controller and the controller mainly fighters why we are going for the maneuverability so maneuverability in a sense uh, when you are uh, flying in the normal passenger aircraft so you don't have any problem of uh, uh, what do you call uh, the maneuverability what pilot will do if you want to go from here to delhi you just take off and cruise they don't do dive or they don't go for uh, uh, multiple dives they will just take off land smoothly so that is the ultimate aim but in the fighter we are designing a very complex controller why is it really required that kind of complexity in the controller because we just see, see one uh, uh, video which is taken in the air show where your uh, maneuverability matters in the fighter So uh, these kind of inverted flying or uh, this kind of high pull uh, G, this we will never use in the normal passenger aircraft. Let us assume if you are traveling in any passenger aircraft and somebody is doing this kind of inverted uh, loop, nobody will fly the aircraft because the G force what you, it lacks on your body is very high and it is very difficult the passenger aircraft to control like this. But this is an unstable aircraft. LCA is an unstable aircraft, so you want to control the unstable aircraft with all the maneuverings. So you need a digital fly-by-wire control, not the normal controller. With, so you need a digital fly-by-wire controller. Uh, so uh, those kind of uh, uh, maneuver uh, when you are going for those kind of maneuvering uh, fighter it has to be designed for this kind of maneuvers when you are going for any enemy territories or wherever uh, you host uh, your your strength is the maneuverability how fast or how uh, the turns and the loops are it should be very sharp and it should be faster so for that you need those kind of controllers so the how the controller is implemented the uh, this is the uh, uh, main diagram how the fly by wire system is implemented in this uh, aircraft. I, so, this is the cockpit where I was showing the small paper. No? So, if he want to pitch up, nose up, down, or left, right, or roll, he will give from this command. Uh, when the first uh, slides, when we were seeing, it was fully linked with the mechanical linkage, but this, why these are all wires, there is no mechanical linkage from your input. To the actuator this is the control surface these boxes are actuators so when you give the uh, control uh, signal or uh, from here to here also there is no mechanical linkage it's through wires probably you would have studied about lvdt right so uh, that's called linear variable differential trans uh, transformer so what does it do uh, when you move the stick up and down it measures the stick input and it gives the voltage so the controller will understand pilot has moved the stick he made the pitch up 
So that pitch up will be computed here and it gives to this actuator and move the aircraft pitch up or pitch down. So this is the flow chart, uh, how, we are, uh, how we are designing the controller. So this is the computer and pilot is sitting here and he is moving the stick. The stick we will call it as uh, stick. Uh, it is like your uh, uh, steering in your uh, uh, car. You have a steering which will move your uh, car left and right. But uh, uh, probably you can't do any pitch up and pitch down in the car. So, but in here, uh, you can move the stick up and down also, like you would have uh, uh, tried in your uh, video games, right? So, video games, uh, sticks are involved, so you can do the uh, up and down, left and right. Same, exactly same thing, it will be like that. So, this input will go to your controller. So, the controller, when we were seeing that maneuverable, uh, how the aircraft was going, the inverted loop and high G turn, because somebody else should monitor this because suppose if the controller goes beyond some uh, if your, your aircraft is suppose your aircraft is designed for the load of 9g if if pilot is by mistakenly he is operating that he is giving more input and if it goes beyond 9g your structure will get uh, collapsed so somebody else should monitor this so we have uh, to monitor the sensors when i was telling about the heater you have only one temperature sensor but in case of uh, here, we have a lot of sensor which will give the inputs to your uh, computer. For example, that uh, G sensors. So suppose your uh, structural loads are increasing more than your design limit, your controller will not even give the input to the actuator. And many of you would have heard about the stalling, uh, spinning of the aircraft. I think this kind of, uh, uh, I think the time is very short, so I can't explain the aerodynamics terms, uh, terms and notation probably uh, if possible we'll discuss it in some other form and uh, or else you can read through the books so suppose if your aircraft uh, 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 pitch up if your aircraft is going beyond some limit of aoa then it will not get the uh, lift so what will happen aircraft will start uh, filling down so once if it is uh, failing to get the command so you will never control the aircraft to come back to the same position. So somebody should avoid this. So this controller, what it will do when your uh, uh, input goes beyond some limit, it cuts off this because it has a sensor which will compute your angle of attack. That means how much pitch up you are going. So it will compute uh, the command signal based on the feedback received. So if your aircraft is going in the higher speed, there are some speed uh, measuring devices. So if you are going with the higher speed and the input which goes to the control surfaces will be different. It will not be same as like for the lesser speed. So that means if he gives more input which will damage your aircraft, it will not go to the actuator. So this is the best part in the flight control computer. And this is called control loop. So when you are seeing in the aircraft, uh, many loops it would have uh, formed. So that each loop, how it works because of the control law. So how the controller will be designed for pitch, there is a separate controller and for roll, there's a separate controller for yaw, there's a separate controller. So these controller, what it does, it takes the input from the pilot and the feedback sensors correspondingly, it gives to the actuator. Let us say here a PAD controller. I think many of you would have heard the PAD controller. So this PAD controller is the one which we gets the error signal. So uh, the PAD controller itself, it is a separate topic. We can discuss what is mean by proportional, what is mean by integral, what is mean by derivative. So this controller you would have studied, this controller, exactly same controller we are also using. So this controller, what it does, all the, uh, most of the fighter records will use the similar kind of uh, controller. Either it may be uh, uh, sometimes all three or sometimes two, sometimes combination. Uh, there are uh, uh, two types of uh, fly-by-wire system uh, is available. One is that analog system, another one is digital. Uh, analog, let us not discuss because those are very uh, older trends. We'll discuss only about the digital uh, fly-by-wire system. So digital fly-by-wire system is the one which you are having one computer, but at the same time that one computer will have multiple uh, uh, redundancy so for example so uh, when you are uh, uh, riding a bicycle you have uh, uh, pedals and the pedals are linked to with the chain and to the uh, your uh, 
uh, which will transmit your power right so in suppose if the chain cuts so you don't have any backup so you can't uh, ride your cycle beyond that for avoiding that what you can have instead of one chain probably you can have four chain so if one chain cuts out then you will have another remaining three chain so still you can continue your journey but what will happen this will give you a lot of load you have to drive all four chain or the system the your cycle weight will keep on increasing but in case of uh, fly by wire if you go instead of that three chain or four chain you just give four wires because four wires it will never give you more weight to your system suppose if one wire cuts let us assume that you have a sensor so let us take a temperature sensor uh, in your heater the temperature sensor you have four temperature sensor you have four controller one temperature sensor if it is not working but still you will have three other three temperature sensor which will still give you measure the temperature and give this to the controller so till you have a last sensor you will get the system can fly so similar way what how we are using the aircraft uh, uh, flight control system we will be using many controllers instead of using one control we use many controllers instead of using one sensor we use many sensors so what will happen if one sensor fail obviously other sensors will give the uh, inputs to the controller one controller fails other control will. i have some uh, images about the controller we'll see that right now the uh, uh, fly by wire system it is used in almost all the aircraft even the uh, civil aircraft uav space shuttles everywhere they are using the fly by wire uh, mechanism advantages already we discussed uh, uh, it will reduce your uh, 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 overall maintenance and the weight mainly your aircraft weight will weight will come down at the same time your reliability and safety reliability in the sense the rate of uh, the probability of failure will be very very less because even if you see uh, uh, with the last 10 years before some 60 to 70 years if you see the aircraft uh, accidents would have been more when you compare with the older days now it is very very less very hardly you will see some accident because your reliability of the your aircraft has become very very high because you are using a controller you are using a computer you have multiple redundancy even if what one fails other will take over uh, this is called uh, flight control uh, computer so this computer this is the one uh, is it uh, visible to everybody because as it is online session whether we visit uh, uh, visible, sir, visible. yeah yeah fine, fine thank you so this is the one important slide so this is the controller uh, the controller of the aircraft so you can see some blocks one two three four blocks correct so this four blocks i'll show one more image Uh, I think I don't have it in this desktop. So this is the controller. If you see, uh, this four will have will have one controller. This is another controller. This is another controller. This is another controller. So each block of this will work as a independent controller. So what is meant by controller? What you need for the controller? Uh, you have to have a, a, a processor. If you open your mobile, you will have the same kind of the board, which is backside of your uh, mobile, will have a processor, memory, and the power supply card. This is the only simple uh, things will be there. So here also, only thing is that all the cards and components what we are using is airworthy. So you have to qualify it for the airworthy. That is the only difference here. Apart from this concept is very much pretty similar to that. So here it will have some power supply card so it receives the power supply and it gives the power supply to the internal component point number one and the second one is the processor whatever the logic you are writing that will be written on the so the how the processor will work and you have a small memory you write your logic and embed your program here so this will work whatever you want to do so let us say this is a heater so this heater what will happen you write a program if the temperature goes above 40, stops. If the temperature comes below 40, you start. You just write the small code and you embed it here and close the car. So then you keep it inside the heater, switch on. 
so this controller what it works because it get it keep on getting the sensors feedback and if the temperature goes beyond some value immediately it cuts off if the temperature comes below value it cuts again it switch on the power supply simple it is as simple as it is but here why we have multiple cards because we have one temperature sensor but in case of uh, flyby we have multiple so i'll just show you one video why we are going for multiple redundancy so this is the video which is taken here uh, for the air to air refueling so this is one of the trials which we will be uh, doing for the aircraft as a part of testing so this is lca and this we will call it as tanker aircraft this will have the fuel and you are uh, flying in in between when you are flying you need the aircraft to be filled with the fuel so when you are going for your other territory and come back again you should land and refuel then you go for the mission it will take a lot of time so they hardly take some around 10 uh, uh, within a minute you can complete or 2 uh, 3 minutes you can complete your uh, whole filling of the fuel when you are filling the uh, in air uh, normally when you are going for the petrol bunk what they, there are a lot of uh, 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 things that don't do is the mobile don't come near to this fire there are many restriction when you are filling the fuel for your bike which is on ground probably even if it happens you can probably escape from there but when you are flying in air and in air you have to fill your aircraft so there are a lot of safety concerns suppose if your speed of your aircraft goes exceeds then it is a catastrophe and when your speed is coming very lesser it is a catastrophe so all are catastrophic in the sense why i am saying because catastrophic is the highest possibility of failure so this is how it get engaged so after once if it is engaged then the fuel will be keep on coming to your fuel tank and it will get filled uh i think it was taken around 20000 feet height it was flying so uh so when you are uh, doing that kind of uh, very critical activity you should have multiple redundancy of the controller let us assume you are flying and you are uh, refueling your aircraft suddenly there are some problems which is happening inside your circuit somebody else should take over because all four will parallelly working it is not, there is no stand over here stand by in the sense how the rally will come so one person will go and give the stick to other person he will take over so it is not like that so all four will be simultaneously working so whenever there is a problem immediately it takes over because your sharpness is very very important when you are uh, designing a flight control computer so this is the open if you open each card will have similar kind of you just assume this is similar to your mobile phone card so i think we are reaching the time uh, so uh, this is the this is how your uh, representation of each sensor how it is mounted in the aircraft this is the your computer will have uh, redundant uh, electrically redundant controllers motion sensor your input will come to the controller and it gives to the actuator and main feature uh, which i want to touch upon is the autopilot so still that what we were discussing pilot will give the input that goes to the controller and then it goes to the control surfaces either goes up and down roll whatever the activity to do but in case of auto pilot the pilot doesn't require to give any input pilot can sit aram se so let us say pilot uh, is not giving input he wants to go to the uh, 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 place uh, i mean uh, to the altitude of 20000 feet what pilot will do he will fit that 20000 feet he will go there the air to air refueling what i was showing also pilot will not give any input he will press the auto pilot button exactly it maintains the same speed and same altitude at the same direction there won't be any up and down if you see that video very sharply it will maintain but pilot manually it is very difficult for him to maintain that kind of flow input so here when you see the autopilot when you want to go for 20000 feet you just press the button and uh, uh, enter the button of 20000 feet press autopilot so instead of input goes from your input stick controller itself will give the inputs to the actuator and after reaching 20000 feet it intimate to the pilot it has reached the 20000 feet and suppose you are in the uh, uh, different orientation where we were seeing that uh, uh, air show maneuvering 
here you are in the inverted flight you want to come back you just press one button called level button anybody can fly nowadays the fighter aircraft so you press level button and you sit then immediately the controller will give the control signal to the actuator and it levels levels in the sense straight it will make the aircraft and in flight so there are many other features are there in the autopilot nowadays even the passenger aircraft they use the autopilot from here to delhi if you want to go what you have to do you just press the button called autopilot and you press the waypoint for delhi see all the waypoints how it should travel to delhi everything will be loaded inside the page so it will go via if you want to go to via bangalore calcutta and then uh, other way then it reach delhi so that will go accordingly it will exactly reach your delhi till reaching the delhi you no need to give any input no input from the pilot so it everything goes from the autopilot to the actuator so after reaching then you can take over the control uh what is the competition so competition is so nowadays uh, uh, all the uh, uh, commercially available aircraft whether it may be fighter trainer or uh, passenger aircraft these are all the aircraft which is working under the principle of fly by wire system whether it may be boeing or uh, uh, f22 whatever the uavs they are using the fly by wire control so the lca we are using in hcl we are using the fly by wire system for lca um i think we are reaching the time so this is already we discussed so redundancy the flyby wire will be best in fit for your redundancy and it has its own uh, testing so what we were talking uh, when the sensor fails pilot he no need to concentrate about anything so pilot if one controller fail pilot he no need to manually change to the second controller the controller itself it just uh, uh, shut down the one controller it takes over other controllers there are already built in test so uh, there are some uh, logical algorithms which is uh, implemented in the controller each and every time it checks the health of the sensors also whether the sensor is working or not also it will check if the sensor is not working it will not take the value so that kind of uh, uh, intelligent uh, controller uh, it is so that the pilot he no need to concentrate about other things and uh, nowadays the pilots uh, it is like the mobile phone the earlier days is when you are using the mobile phone it was used only for making the phone calls where in the uh, maybe some 10 15 years back where you will have a, a, a telephone where you just uh, dial up the numbers talk to the, your uh, your friends or families then you disconnect it so but now the phones are used not just for uh, making the phone calls you can uh, internet uh, watching the videos or uh, learning about the uh, different languages many things are used similar way nowadays pilot he want to concentrate only about the mission he doesn't want to fly at all you press the autopilot and you concentrate about the mission activities so everything else will be taken over by the controller and uh, this is the last slide uh, uh, we are running out of time so this is the last slide for your uh, for you guys uh, as a student as well as your uh, engineering team what exactly uh, the industry is expecting from a person who comes to the uh, aero industry first thing is that you at least you understand any one software language any one software language either i have taken two examples either you uh, understand matlab or lab view so this matlab and lab view if you are thorough with this how to make the uh, there are a lot of examples are available in the matlab as far well as lab view you have to like you take one small system how to control the speed of a motor you write your program in the matlab and that program should work real time correct so you not only just simulation you are making some program and it should control the motor also then you understand the both the hardware so what hardware exactly it works so hardware in the sense at least you buy this arduino i prefer there are two hardwares which is commercially available for the students as well as for the uh, guys who want to come for uh, uh, core domains core domains so this is called uh, arduino i think many of you are uh, you have used for your uh, uh, career or your uh, engineering projects take one arduino board and you link this both you work you just make some programs in the lab view and the program should interact with your uh, hardware called arduino then the uh, suppose if you are temperature controlled the temperature input should come to the arduino and you read the temperature sensor value to the lab view. that's it so you are almost done 
so if you know only this the outside industry they are expecting only this you don't need to go for any certification programs or any uh, hi fi uh, 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 whatever commercially available other softwares you don't need to understand anything all are available in your uh, lab software itself you just read some sensor value through your hardware to your software and you give some control signal to the hardware either led blinking you make for led blinking or there are some few projects i have taken this is for speed control so you make some program in the lab view for speed control and then you embed it in the uh, arduino then you start working it so that the speed will be keep on controlled by the arduino this is called the uh, irio uh, lab view you can try mi they are giving this kind of uh, uh, package to the um, uh, to the students version i think uh, you can check for myrio there are similar kind of thing this will acquire your signal and you can read the signal to the lab view so you no need to uh, uh, have a separate uh, uh, other uh, uh, elements to acquire the signal uh, i have one other one i think fine so so whenever uh, you want to understand about the let us take one pid controller you implement the pid controller in the lab view itself you make everything like all your tuning uh, your proportional derivative integral get everything you tune it then you embed it to your uh, you just pass your program to the hardware called the arduino so the arduino will work exactly similar to the uh, simulation what you did in the lab view then it controls the motor similar kind of experiment if you are thorough with this loop any industry will acquire any industry any industry not only just aero you can go for electrical or communication related things anywhere wherever you go they are expecting only this uh this are all from my side so if you have any queries uh, you can ask me now uh, thank you sir thank you for the wonderful presentation on the <coughs> aircraft design sir thank you uh, dear uh, students or faculty members if you have any queries uh, regarding the design or uh, the presentation you can ask first you can post in the chat box i will ask yeah. on behalf of you if you have any queries probably you can post me later uh, also you can uh, send to your convener uh, and we can discuss about the same topic and our students are uh, mostly focusing on the drone tech and uav tech sir i think your session is okay. important for them okay sure sure uh, yes, yeah uh, and another thing is that uh, probably you can uh, look for industrial collaboration projects whenever you go for uav uh, take any uh, aero industries collaboration so that you can make your prototype and you can test it uh, in the with the collaboration with the industry so that both will be benefited because aero industry they are looking for the people or looking for the students who is uh, eagerly uh, ready to work in the uh, different kind of like this art artificial intelligence this kind of uh, area just now we are entering so if we are collaborating with the students it will be uh, good for uh, us also to learn yes sir any doubts regarding the session the friends Okay, sir. I think yeah. you no know, doubts from the. Uh, yeah. Thing I will uh, share the recordings in the YouTube so that they can listen again. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. For PCA and other co-organizers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, dear students, I have posted the feedback link for session one. You can.